Hello and welcome to the Beef Edge, the Chagas Beef Podcast, for all your latest news, information and advice for Irish beef farmers. I'm Catherine Egan and on this week's episode, I'm joined by Chagas Environment Specialist Catherine Keena to find out about the new proposed Agri-Climate Rural Environmental Scheme, also known as ACRES. What does it involve and which options you should select? Catherine, you're very welcome. Listeners would have participated in previous environmental schemes such as REPS and more recently GLASS. How does the new Agri-Climate Rural Environment Scheme compare? There are some main differences, Catherine, and there's some, you know, some very sim- similar for some farmers. Uh, the first difference is there are two areas of the country uh, that you may fall into. You may be in a cooperation project area, which is delineated on the, on maps and it's predominantly the uplands and the the very uh, special nature areas. So if you're in 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 a cooperation project area, it's a very different process at this stage than if you're in uh, the uh, the general acre scheme. So that's the first point uh, to figure out which one you're in. Now, for both, you need to apply now this autumn. um, But if you're in the cooperation project, it is a very simple application because all the work will happen in 2023. So we'll focus more, I think, on the general acres at this point, Catherine, um, because that's what's what farmers need in those areas, which is the majority of the country, uh, need to be considering now. Perfect, Catherine. And in general, the acres scheme is structured around the hierarchy of tiers, which farmers have been hearing about. Can you explain what that means? Yeah, I suppose, again, in, in the general acres, if you have Natura or for the, the, the smaller number of farmers with commonage, um, which are in the general area, they will have priority. There's also priority if you have um, high water status or vulnerable water. There are a number of those and you farmers won't actually maybe fully know whether where their priority lies until the, their advisor goes into the computer and you see the layers of maps there. They'll know, obviously, if they're in a mature area, designated area. So not to worry too much at this stage. If you're in a special area which gives you a priority, that's great. And then there are certain actions then that if you're in, um, that you may do to get yourself a higher up the prioritization for selection. And that will obviously only happen if more farmers apply than are um, accepted into the scheme for this tranche. But don't forget there will be another tranche um, next year. Catherine, while farmers will undertake grassland actions, all should consider the full suite of actions available. For listeners that are operating a beef system, what actions should they be considering? Yeah, the grassland options, this is again is the, the, the most important change from glass. So farmers who are, are in glass, most farmers, most beef farmers would have chosen low input permanent pasture or traditional hay meadow. That would have been the most common action. Now, there's a huge difference happening with that action. Um, it's, it's split into two. There are two choices. And one of them is for the, the more valuable, um, more valuable in my eyes, the more flowery grassland that will go into a, an action called LIG, low input grassland, and that will be scored. So, and your pay, the payment will de- depend on the results. This is where we're talking about results-based actions. So if your grassland that you had in glass, or not every farmer, of course, was in glass, but if you have grassland, extensively managed grassland that does have flowers in it, um, that is highly valuable and will gain more money. Um, it, the payment there ranges from, well, it ranges from zero up to 450 euros per hectare. Um, but that w- it will only score high if it's flowery grassland. Alternatively, um, farmers who farm extensively and have grassland that is non-flowery, but is still non-ryegrass, that will likely go into the extensively grazed pasture option, which is 200 euros per hectare. It's an action based. It's not scored. So I would say a lot of farmers will be going for extensively grazed pasture and you can get you can do 10 hectares of that. So if you work the sums, that's 10 hectares at 200 euros, 2000 euros. 
um, only from their grassland, whereas in glass, they may have got the majority of the money from, from, uh, from their grassland. So, Catherine, the message to them then is they need to be thinking of what other actions they want to do to, to get up to the maximum payment. And similarly to glass, there are wild bird actions. What do they consist of? Yeah, the wild bird action in glass, it was a lot of people did it because it got them up the up the tiers up the prioritization limit. So you almost had to do wild bird cover to be sure to get into glass. Now that did result in wild bird cover going into areas where it wasn't suitable. So that has been dropped. So luckily farmers who don't like it, who it doesn't suit, who don't have land suitable for wild bird cover won't won't need to take that option. Um, but for farmers whom it suits and who have land um, that suits and, you know, they can do three hectares and there's a good payment on that of a thousand euro a hectare. So it's it's a brilliant option where it suits and there is no pressure on farmers to do it this time round. The, the pressure one this time round for um, our pressure one, the potential that, that that is really good to do is the grassy margins. Um, you know, and it's one I'm particularly in, interested in. I think there's a role for grassy margins on every farm, uh, and that involves fencing off uh, away from the hedge, away from the water course, uh, two, three, six meters out, and you get paid a lot of money for the land, and it can still be grazed or cut after the first of September. But it is giving the the that space on the farm for nature, for for flowers, for even for the grasses to flower. So grassy margins, everybody needs to start thinking about, do I like them? Will they suit me? How, how do I do them? How will I manage them? If I do put them in, what width will I go for? So grassy margins, really important that we start talking about them, Catherine. In relation to rare breeds, Catherine, what livestock qualify for payment? Well, for the cattle, we have the Kerry, Dexter and Irish Whale as before, and we now also have the Drimmon. Uh, for the horses and ponies, the Connemara, the Irish Draft and Kerry Bog Pony. And again, we have the old Irish goat as along with the, the Galway yo. Also, you mentioned there earlier the water courses for farmers that would have a water course on the farm. What option could they select? If they're in certain areas, they will. It's a, it'll be a mandatory for them to select options. So, look, the best protection for water courses is to to fence them off, get well paid for the for the grassy margins alongside the water course. And there's also a new, uh, a, rather than a linear margin, that is kind of a plot area that you can, you know, protect a particular point in a in a in a in an area based rather than just a, a linear one. So protection of water courses and also for every action based act if, if for every action that's chosen under acres, uh, the water course will have to be fenced in that field. And um, so yeah, protection of water courses it will be really a focus for vulnerable water areas. And these more these are similar to the priority areas for actions that I'm sure you've talked about before. Um, but really, it is when you look at the computer, you will know exactly where and what on your farm when the advisor looks at the computer, um, that that will be clear. I know you mentioned there the archaeological monuments, but for farmers with stone walls on their farm, how will they be paid for the scheme? That's gone up slightly from the last time. I mean, it's a good measure for anyone that has anyone that has stone walls and um, for maintaining them. It's yeah, seven six cent per meter per year for maintaining dry stone walls. And is there a maximum number of meters that a farmer can apply for? If there is, it's quite high at 4,000. That's great, Catherine. And who is eligible to apply and how do farmers apply from now on? Provided they put in a BPS application in 2021, farmers can apply for acres and they apply through their advisor. Uh, Chagas clients received um, a support uh, request form with the August newsletter. So that needs to be returned to the local Chagas office. And for farmers who deal with private advisors, it's advisable to contact them at this stage. It's going to be an extremely busy time for advisors um, from now on until, you know, until mid-November when it's expected to, to close. Similarly to Glass, there'll be a number of different tranches, as you mentioned, Katrin. What does that mean for farmers 
I suppose it, it, it means that farmers who don't apply or don't get through in this year to start on the first of the first, uh, the first of January 2023, they can apply in 2023 and their their five year cycle would start on the first of January 2024. And there may even be a third tranche. So that is good. Some farmers actually prefer to wait and see um, how others get on and may not want to apply this time or some farmers may not get in this time. And um, so the, the good news is there will be a second tranche. You mentioned a different rate of payment for different actions that farmers picked, Katrin, and it's a 1.5 billion scheme, and it's one of the single biggest investments by the government. But for farmers on the ground, what is the maximum payment that they can achieve? For farmers outside the cooperation project, so in the general scheme, it's 7,311, very uh, kind of a, a specific figure. And for farmers in the cooperation projects, they are eligible to get up to 10,500. And what would you see as the average payment per farm? I suppose hopefully farmers would be getting up towards the, the maximum. Um, it's not all about area because we mentioned the wild bird cover. If you have three hectares, you can get 3,000 euros on it only. So it's not a case of needing a lot of land. Um, but it, So it will depend how much farmers want to do to... to you know, to give over to Space for Nature and to be paid for it. That's great, Catherine. We look forward to a follow-up in October. Thank you, Catherine. That's all for this week's episode. And my thanks to Catherine for joining me on the show. We are currently running a survey to find out how the Beef Edge podcast is of use to you. And if you could click on the link in the episode notes to complete the survey, it will help us improve the show. In the meantime, you can catch up on all other shows and interviews from the Beef Edge podcast on the Chagas website at chagas.ie or you can listen on Apple and Google Podcasts as well as Spotify. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe so you never miss a show. For all other updates on our beef programme, keep an eye on our Twitter and Facebook pages. Until next time, I'm Catherine Egan and thanks for listening.